Why the fuck did I do this? These movies are so fucking bad. Why did you vote for this? And furthermore, why did I suggest it? To all the people that told me these movies weren't necessarily bad, they were just really fucking dull, why did you lie to me? And if you weren't lying and genuinely thought these movies were only mediocre and not literally the worst four movie series ever made, then what the fuck is wrong with you? Alright everyone, super extra long media reloaded for this month, because today we're taking on the full open season quadrilogy. Warning, if you are prone to being easily in infected with weaponized autism, then please get the fuck off this video. This is intended so you don't sue the shit out of me because I don't have any fucking money right now. Okay, so the legacy begins with a big grizzly twerking for his fuck ugly ginger handler. Here's a fun fact, this bear is like the male version of some trashy black chick. And what I've come to find is that there's a lot of characters in this movie that are like racial allegories for some reason. I guess it tried to do Zootopia before Zootopia was the thing to begin with, but somehow it really fucked it up because these movies are way more unintentionally racist than they're trying to be. So the bear, whose name is Boo, goes into town with his dumb bitch handler that for some bizarre fucking reason can't drive on the correct side of the road. This is a theme that keeps popping up where characters just randomly, for no particular reason, decide to drive on the exact wrong side of the road over and over and over again. So, you know, your typical idiot American. So they go to a store and talk to some Indian guy where I'd like to imagine that he berated her for taking his land or something. You white devil no taking my land. And then this derpy motherfucker comes out of nowhere with a deer on his hood. Let me pause the movie for a moment. I want to talk about this shit animation real quick. I have never, and I mean never, seen such disturbing animation in my whole life. Granted, I hear that Food Fight is like the worst ever, but as of the making of this video, I have not yet seen Food Fight. But every character model in this movie just looks wrong. Why does Boog have tiny hands? And you know what they say about men with small hands? Why is he part platypus? Why is the deer's face bigger than the entire rest of his body? Why does his dumb faggot's face melt into the rest of his body? Why is her head disproportionate to the entire rest of her body? Why do you look like you came out of Alpha and Omega? It's so hard to watch this movie when everyone in it is so fucking ugly. So anyway, this is the bad guy, and his name is Shawshank Redemption. Okay, that wasn't really funny. Crucify me! So the deer isn't dead and reveals that he's actually Ashton Kutcher. As it turns out, his career has plummeted so far down the shitter that he had to take this job to appear even halfway relevant. So Boog sets him free... Kinda. He only cuts one rope and calls it good somehow, despite having the entire rest of his body tied up. Just having one hoof untied allows him to free himself despite animal appendages that are not meant to work like that. And thus he escapes. So Boog goes home and then Ashton Kutcher starts throwing rabbits at his window and introduces himself to the garage. He proceeds to give Boog chocolate, which has roughly the same effect on him as weed does on me. They proceed to break into a store in the middle of nowhere that has all of its lights on and no alarms. Then they get stoned out of their minds and then Boog is arrested and taken back to his house where he proceeds to fuck off back to the garage. The next day, Ashton Kutcher does the sensible thing and buys a coffee and decides to walk bipedally in broad daylight in front of hundreds of people. Yet somehow, only Shawshank sees this. Upon the realization that it's walking like a human, Shawshank decides to destroy the whole town trying to run him over. This understandably pisses people off, but they don't actually do anything about it. So Boog goes on stage to ride a unicycle for some stupid reason, but Ashton Kutcher comes back in to fuck with everything. So Boog decides to tell him to fuck off and proceeds to rip him into a million pieces. <laughs> Oh god, I wish. Why would you tease me like this, movie? No, it just looks like he's ripping Ashton Kutcher's entrails out, but he isn't actually doing it. So Shawshank tries to shoot him, but he sucks at aiming, but he stealthily gets away because he's needed elsewhere in the plot. So Ginger Bitch decides to take Boog and Ashton Kutcher into the mountains, presumably so Boog can rip Ashton into a million pieces and feast on his corpse. That would be the sensible thing, but we're talking about a movie that doesn't make sense at all. So upon the realization that he's stranded in the middle of nowhere, Boog firmly plants Elliot, oh yeah, Ashton Kutcher's name is Elliot in this movie, into the ground and leaves him there to die. But because Boog sucks at navigating, he tries to get up a tree where he meets some Scottish squirrels. They proceed to throw acorns at him and he walks around in circles for hours and runs back into Elliot who says he can lead him back to town. Yeah, that would have been great information to have 
five hours ago. He pulls Elliot out of the ground and they go to find a deer herd. Boog doesn't really give a shit though and he starts talking to ducks instead where he's told a very inspirational story about how the duck migration started spontaneously exploding for no reason. I think this is meant to be a World War II analogy, but as it stands, all the duck says is that the ducks started blowing up for no reason, so we're left to wonder how the fuck a bunch of ducks just started blowing up out of nowhere. Meanwhile, Elliot finds a deer with a fat ass. No, seriously, her ass is bigger than the entire rest of her body. What is it with this movie in making certain parts of someone's form bigger than the entire rest of it? So then the male deer come out of nowhere where Patrick Warburton reprises his role as himself, and they proceed to tell Boog this. Oh, I've heard of you. You're that bear that got his butt thumped by a squirrel. I'm sorry, what was that? You're that bear that got his butt thumped by a squirrel. Just one more time. You're that bear that got his butt thumped by a squirrel. Okay, no joke, I seriously thought at first that he said you're that bear that got butt fucked by a squirrel. There are several points in this movie where the dialogue is written in such a way that it sounds almost exactly like Kronk here was talking about Boog getting fucked by a squirrel or something. While some may try to pass it off as mere coincidence, I say nay because it happens multiple times and there's a ton of bad sexual humor in this movie. So Elliot puts a stupid stick on his head since one of his antlers falls off and then everyone leaves and they go back to the beaver dam because Elliot's a big fucking idiot. And then Shawshank chases them and they destroy the dam and then there's a moment that I think is supposed to be emotional but I couldn't give two fucks less about it at this point. Oh, and throughout most of this movie, this creepy fucking porcupine keeps following them around. Buddy. He's also simultaneously the only good part of the movie, so I guess he has that going for it. I'm not even gonna try to figure out how this scene is logically possible, I'm just gonna pass it off as Physics! Physics! Physics. Oh yeah, and I forgot there's also two sassy black skunks. Nigga, you stank! So Boog tells everyone to fuck themselves, and the porcupine says, And it's open season! So Boog goes off and finds Shawshank's cabin and they chase each other around and, you know, this whole fucking scene goes nowhere. It could have been taken out and it wouldn't have changed a fucking thing. So Boog finds town and grows a conscience and wants to help all these animals he doesn't know, doesn't care about, and has been trying to get away from for a day and a half because, you know, after only 36 hours, he's grown so emotionally attached to every character in this movie that he wants to take them all back home. Well, actually, just Elliot. Did the movie makers know that nobody likes him? So anyway, they find a bunch of hunters blocking their way and decide to fight them. So they find a sexy German dog and he joins the team and they rip apart a trailer and use it to make weapons and then they Lord of the Rings the shit out of this. So then they launch a propane tank into some cars and they start exploding like dominoes and flying into the air and shit and um... Um... What? That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Oh, and then Elliot gets shot and then he dies. The end. I'm gonna go jack off now. No, wait. Resurrection time. Oh, God. This is happening now. All I wanted was for one of these stupid fucking characters to jump off a cliff and kill themselves, but no, they can't even do that. Even when there's a halfway legitimate reason to kill off one of these characters, they fucking fail. Why the fuck did they just... <laughs> Ugh, fuck you. So then they all start doing the furry fuck dancing. Wait a minute.
So naturally, since the first movie was so successful, we needed not one sequel, but three of them. God damn it. So the movie starts off with fucking Elliot bragging about his new rack. Yep, they're still going with these bad sex jokes again. For some reason, his rack is bigger than most living beings on the planet, but since the movie makers didn't want to try and do something creative, they just said fuck it and broke his rack within the first two minutes of establishing that it appeared in the first place. Hooray. Then he gets into a rabbit fight because for some weird fuck fucking reason, there's just rabbits readily available to be thrown around in this universe. So Elliot's going to marry this bitch with a fat ass and doesn't want to get married anymore because he's fucking retarded. As soon as Patrick Warburton says they'll be together forever and ever, Elliot, being the stupid shit he is, immediately takes issue with the and ever part because apparently and ever is too much of a commitment beyond forever. Please just fucking kill me, I don't want to do this anymore. So the seductive German dog's owners find him and kidnap him before Elliot can say Fuck you, bitch, I'm going gay, nigga. Elliot decides it's super important to find this stupid fucking dog that played approximately no role in the first movie aside from just being there. Oh, and for some reason, he's purple in the rest of the sequels. So the dog is kidnapped and taken on a journey where there's a bunch of shitty cats and dogs going to a cat and dog park. One of these dogs is basically a Q-tip with legs, but it has roughly the same personality as me, which is to say it's a stupid fucking faggot. So they stop at a gas station and we're introduced to Roger. Roger is easily the best part of this whole fucking franchise. The only reason I didn't fall asleep out of boredom was because Roger is very seriously, genuinely fucking funny. That's not a joke, by the way. I'm actually being serious for once in my stupid fucking life. Roger is a mentally retarded cat that says random stupid shit and does random stupid shit. That's somehow much better written than the entire rest of the fucking movie. Finally, old buddy. Oh, here we go. Finally, it's an age of Actually, it's been exactly one year, Roger. Really? It seems like such a long time. Oh, I have to explain this again. Okay, listen. We go to Pet Perry Disu every year at the same time, and painfully, we have the same conversation. We do? Yes, yes, we do. Is this ringing a bell? Finally, it's been ages. Okay, this movie is like a solid 1 out of 10, but that 1 comes specifically from Roger. So me tells all the other degenerates about my harrowing adventure into a bush where I see a ladybug and something stung my ass and that's bad for some reason. So then I go to scare some retarded bunny that goes absolutely nowhere. Meanwhile, Elliot and his retarded friends try to rescue a dog and immediately fuck it up because Elliot is an unmitigated idiot and manages to lock the dog in the RV right after freeing him, as well as accidentally almost killing the fucking porcupine. Elliot Elliot proceeds to blame his girlfriend and then fucks off to the middle of nowhere to find him somewhere else and immediately falls off a cliff. There's a lot of cliff jokes in this movie. Apparently it's supposed to be funny every time some dipshit accidentally walks off of a fucking cliff, but I fail to see what the punchline is meant to be. The only reason I'd manage to find it funny is if they actually died when they fall off. So anyway, the rest of the characters do the sensible thing and try to fucking follow the road, which actually takes them to the middle of nowhere as well. Okay, I don't even want these characters to die like like dick skin and fuckins. I at least want them to die because I hate them. I want these people to die because they're so fucking dumb. So anyway, everyone camps out in an electric fence or something and me and some other faggots try to torture the dog by way of squeaky toy. Somehow this Einstein level genius plan goes mysteriously awry and has no effect whatsoever. And then the porcupine takes off the dog's electric collar and gives it to me, creating a giant fucking zit on my face. Then they run away and just happen to run into Elliot who spent the last 20 minutes of this movie running around a dumpster that's conveniently sitting in the middle of nowhere. Meanwhile, everyone else makes it to the dog and cat park and they decide to paint themselves as dogs. This is cultural appropriation, you fucking white cis deer. This somehow tricks everybody. Gotcha, <sighs> something's not right. Do you smell something fishy here? Barracuda. So their cover is immediately blown and they're locked in a giant plastic mountain and then Elliot and the dog come by and find that Boog has not only grown dreadlocks but is also white. Hey, that's fine. Black power, girl. Uhuru. Somehow, the guards fail to notice that this wonderful disguise includes a woman whose face is that of a deer. And they may as well have not even used this disguise considering that they fuck it up within five seconds of entering the park anyway. Wow. Did anybody see that coming? Yes. yes. Even Roger saw that coming. 
I did. So then they somehow bullshit their way out of getting tranquilized, and then everyone goes home and the dog decides to leave the forest and be with his family. What the fuck? This whole movie was about rescuing you. You're telling me that I wasted an hour and a half of my fucking life watching a movie about these bumbling retards fucking off to find your sorry ass. But in the end, when they actually succeed, you choose to be with your family anyway. Weenie, it's been idle. <sighs> Is my chance. Roger! Hey, let's go find your buddy Stanley. No, 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 he's your friend now. So since that movie was also very successful, we get another one. How fucking awesome. So the movie starts off with Boog doing black people things like dancing. Then he proceeds to help the beavers build a dam by ripping a tree out of the ground and smashing it into a million pieces. You know, I somehow don't feel like that's going to help much. Then he pisses off the squirrels who throw their nuts at him because there wasn't enough of that joke in the previous two monstrosities. So nobody wants to hang out with Boog anymore because, you know, he's one of them darkies. Even the ducks don't want to do it. But something tells me they're afflicted with something I like to call Steve Shives Syndrome. It's catchy because there's three S's. Steve Shives Syndrome. Which is to say they're so cucked by these skunk bitches that they can't even drop shit and hang out. Even Elliot's cucked and he's cucked by his dickhead daughters and his autistic son who... No. No. Physics. 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 These movies are all one and the same. Oh yeah, and the kid breaks his antler like his retarded dad. How fucking wonderful. Conflict! Oh yeah, and he's cucked by his wife. Literally everyone in this film is a fucking cuck. Fuck, this must take place in Canada. This is what you get from drinking milk from a bag. As a side note, I don't know what's scarier. The fact that there's still another movie after this, or the fact that Elliot actually stuck his crooked dick up this bitch's fuckhole. So Boog is forced to travel on his sausage ranch trip alone with his fucking puppet. I I already feel like a faggot. So Boog climbs up some mountain in the middle of nowhere where he pretends he has friends. Is this movie a story about me? And he's conveniently followed by sentient lightning and runs into a rabbit that's always conveniently in every scene ever. Boog then proceeds to lose his collective fucking mind in a dumpster and decides to murder everybody. But first, cocaine. Boog proceeds to objectify this rabbit. Hey, that's my fetish. Objectifying. Not the rabbit part. Okay, that's not entirely true. So Boog finds a tent where there's a bunch of circus bears, and even better, there's Russian bears. Oh yeah, and a Mexican llama, which you know is probably illegal. And then there's another black bear, but he's even worse than Boog because he's insurmountably stupid. And then they meet and they're like, we was grizzlies and shit. But no, in reality, this is like a rich black guy from LA finding another black guy in Detroit and immediately assuming that because he's black, then he must be best friend material. Which is, you know, infallible logic. So Boog, in all of his incredible intelligence manages to agree to a plan that gets him trapped in the circus and the other bear can go off and do whatever he wants. I guess it's implied that he's drunk off his ass because chocolate. And then we're back to these idiots and <laughs> you're back. This is the happiest moment of my life. Weenie, it's been ages. Oh, thank you for it. Oh yeah, and I'm back, and I have a donut wrapped around my ass for some reason. But I'm very uncharacteristically happy. That shit ain't right, I'm never happy. And apparently I'm really concerned about Boog for some reason, despite literally trying to kill him in the last movie. What drugs am I- Oh. And then Roger says, Let's go save him! Oh, I wanna go save him! Oh, please, 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 please. <laughs> please note that bringing Roger the retarded cat back is the absolute best possible decision you could have ever made because he's literally the only part of these movies that I unironically enjoy. Also, the reason why they go in search of Boog in the first place is because they saw him on TV even though it clearly was not Boog. Hey, not all grizzlies look the same, okay? So then Elliot's son apparently loses both of his antlers out of nowhere, which makes no sense because that wasn't how it was before. Also, I'm pretty sure his son has autism, which makes sense because Elliot does too. Then they try to eat a bee's nest with bees still in it, which is, you know, logic. And then Boog meets the love of his life, Anya. <laughs> Fuck him hard. So Boog does. <laughs> He immediately fucks it up and tries to explain to the dumb Russian bitch that he's not actually the same bear, but apparently the fact that he's twice his size and doesn't have an even remotely similar voice and also can't do anything for himself doesn't manage to raise red flags for her. Why are bitches so fucking stupid? Meanwhile, not Boog is hated on because of... Why? I guess Elliot just blames all of his problems on grizzlies. Sounds like somebody else I remember. Meanwhile, the Mexican begins to lose his mind for... 
for some reason. Then he starts singing about his fuck ugly girlfriend. Guess she dumped him for being a spitter. God, just man up and swallow, you fucking fag. So then Russian bitch starts dancing and then some old dude watches because look at dead ass, honey child. He's like me, but he likes ass, but with fur on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm losing my mind. Where's Roger when I need him? Oh wait, there he is. It's a <laughs> I love you so much. And then a truck runs over my balls. All around me are familiar faces. Worn out places. Worn out faces. Meet back. Okay, this is indisputably the best character ever written in the history of anything ever. If you disagree, you're fucking wrong. Then we get to see Elliot again. Oh, yay, I really missed you. Can we just get a fucking Roger movie already? I'd watch the fuck out of that. Then not Boog turns the world gray for like three seconds. So stupid Russian bitch still can't figure out that Boog isn't the same bear because women are naturally predisposed to being fucking retarded. So then Boog has a temporary acid trip and then he finally gets to fuck a bitch. Okay, well this movie just ended already. This media reloaded is starting to feel like a really bad acid trip. Ever watched Alien on acid? Please don't do it. Take my word for it, it is not a good idea at all. So our Mexican amigo is sad that Boog isn't gonna fuck him with that rock hard cock, which is probably a good thing because fat people have an issue with small dick syndrome, so it's probably for the best at the end of the day. So this fat Russian bitch wants the tiny D. And it isn't until Queen Cuckapus comes back out of nowhere that people begin to realize that not Boog actually isn't Boog. And he reveals that Boog is gonna be taken back to the Russia. <laughs> Then we come back to the star of this movie once more because apparently they were captured and taken back home. Fantastic. For it, for it. <laughs> oh, meat I love you, Roger. And then they figure out they literally started running around in the middle of nowhere to find Boog when the circus was literally right fucking next to them the whole time. Why didn't you listen to the wisdom of Roger? ROGER! Okay, is this movie gonna end yet? This shit is legitimately starting to make me want to kill myself. And I still have another movie to watch. <laughs> <sighs> so Elliot leads the entire forest to fuck up the circus because that's a great fucking plan. Then the dogs manage to drive their RV. <laughs> then I find some new balls and then I lose them all over again and... Oh yeah, and then the RV physics, physics, physics. So Elliot thinks a tent is impenetrable because, you know, it's cloth. It's destiny. I love you. So then the circus starts and everyone does the thing. Okay, fuck it. This shit sucks. I'm doing the super fast summary. Everyone infiltrates the already open tent. Nobody notices the clearly visible animals. Cats meet each other. Not all cats look the same, okay? Nobody notices the furries. This happens. <laughs> Einstein fires a random dog into space because, you know, that's the professional thing to do. Dumb bitch doesn't see Boog literally right next to her. Hi, Phoebe. Oh, no. A dog pisses on my face. I feign anger when in reality that shit's fucking awesome. Boog puts his hose before bros. You broke the sacred code. How dare you. So nobody can figure out what the fuck they want to do and Boog decides to go back to Russia, which is literally the worst idea anyone has ever had. Then they don't go to Russia, which is the only good idea this movie has had outside of Roger. Then he marries his Russian male bride and then they start singing on the road again because why the fuck not. Then not Boog and Mexicano go back to Russia where they get wonderful things like no rights. Then there's a male stripper scene because we definitely needed the furry version of Magic Mike. Please, for the love of God, don't let that actually be a real thing. And thus ended the open season trilogy. Until five years later, when people had finally forgotten that open season never existed. Once they discovered the bizarre commercial success of the worst movie series ever made, they decided, Hey, let's parade this movie's decaying fucking corpse around like a puppet and make a fourth open season movie. So naturally, they just had to make a new and original movie that's literally pretty much just Ernest Scared Stupid but for fur fags. Motherfucker. Please, let's just get this bullshit over with. So what's the gimmick of this movie? It's a horror movie. Ooh. As if these 
those movies weren't terrifying enough. So a werewolf tries to eat Elliot's wife, and Elliot comes in to play his classic role of being a bumbling retard. So he proceeds to kill it with cringe. <laughs> And it turns out the only one scared of this dipshit story is Boog. So Elliot's all like, no, I'm pretty sure there's good werewolves out there, but you know, let's not let any of them into the country. After all, they're just killing people all the time. Why did they make this movie? Oh yeah, and the moon is apparently as big as the fucking planet, and then it shrinks in the very next frame. Oh, great. And then there's a flashback sequence of the first movie, because people were super fucking nostalgic and super fond of the first three films. So Boog decides to go into a panic room and escape the fictitious werewolf story. God. God, this guy is acting like a 10-year-old that stumbled onto the vampire episode of Lost Tapes. So in other words, me. Oh, and the dog is back despite having driven off into the middle of nowhere at the end of the last movie, so... Also, where's the Russian bitch? But more importantly... Where's Roger? Anyway, Buddy proceeds to accidentally kill a couple bunnies because he was scared of a balloon. I wonder if he's related to Hillary Clinton. So then the most obvious jump scare ever happens, but because the werewolf looks literally autistic, it actually just made me laugh. So they decide to go to a place called Dead Bear Gulch, which I guess is only slightly less retarded than trying to find the ghost of Sawtooth Cave, which is conveniently located on Rabbit Shit Mountain. Then the Nazi dog decides to join them on their journey because he's afraid of them dying, so naturally he decides to try and die with them. Uh... Oh, hey, Shawshank's back. Wait a minute, didn't he, like, get the piss beaten out of him in the first movie? <laughs> See, I can do flashbacks too, bitch! Then the movie tells the characters to die. It's almost as though it was self-aware for a moment. Then everyone appeared out of nowhere because they planned this, apparently. Then the dog's legs break, I guess. Then the purple dinosaur from Alpha and Omega returns to fuck with shit. Then the skunks make a sexual innuendo because, you know... So Elliot starts doing... Whatever this is supposed to be. And then Patrick Warburton turns into the Windigo or something and beats the shit out of Shawshank. Why does Patrick keep doing these movies? Why do any of them keep doing these movies? Then there's a singing part and ugh, just bring back Roger already. You've already tried to spend this entire movie trying to feel whatever fucked up sense of nostalgia there is from the previous three. Just let me have Roger the retarded cat back. So Shawshank manages to convince everyone that werewolves are real without any evidence, which the movie points out. He proceeds to show a really shitty drawing and that somehow convinces everybody. Meanwhile, Boog is sitting on Elliot despite being tall enough to just stand up and look through the fucking window. Then nobody notices the deer hanging two inches above them, and the dog decides to try and eat Boog's droopy dick. And then everyone is convinced to reopen open season. And then Shawshank jumps through a fucking window to see a hole in a bush that looks vaguely like a werewolf of which he drew a picture of, which is somehow still better than anything I can draw. Oh yeah, and they rip off Land of the Lost for a second. You can never be too careful these days. <laughs> Wonderful. Can this movie just end already? I'm really fucking sick of this stupid fucking bullshit. Okay, so Shawshank has his gun under a pink blanket and its own bed and everything. Wow, they nailed the representation of your average resident of Louisiana. So then there's this commercial that really doesn't need to be in the movie at all. Actually, why is this whole scene here? Where's all the side characters that have Roger amongst them? I'm sorry, guys. I'm just so heartbroken that the best character in this whole quadrilogy is not in this fucking movie. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. Never forget he rest in Monster Getty. So no one notices the furries doing sick, twisted, furry fetish shit. What's wrong with you monsters? Also, why is Mr. Native American guy feeding the dog? So Shawshank talks with the Pennywise incest dipshits and they drive off the road. Nobody notices this at this point. And even though they literally launch off a cliff and shit starts floating as if they're in zero gravity. So Elliot sniffs shit, literally, then eats shit, literally. And I don't know what this bitch's problem is because he probably eats her fat ass all the time. I mean, come on. Eat shit. Then Shawshank proceeds to eat the regurgitated shit that Elliot spit out. Because apparently shit jokes are the theme for this movie. So they hijack a plane for some reason and manage to fit the whole fucking forest inside. And they also know how to fly a plane because they're ducks, get it? And then the ducks abandon shit because they don't know how to fly the plane? You realize you were just doing exactly that. And nobody knows how to fly and then they... Never gonna die. Then the dog reveals he's a fake German. How dare you? We. Was. 
Kangs. And then they crash the plane and somehow don't explode. And then the beaver that was on the plane comes out of nowhere as if he wasn't on the plane and it's revealed that he shit out a fucking log. Well... If anyone was fetishizing the beaver at this point. So then the dark starts sucking his own dick and everyone starts chanting to shove a dick up Boog's ass or something. I'll be fucking honest, I actually zoned out for this 20 minute period of time because this movie is so fucking boring. So Boog dresses up as a tranny because, uh... And then Patrick Warburton comes out and tries to fuck Boog. Guys, come on. Traps are gay. <laughs> So then the dog gets into some jelly and they find out that the dog is the werewolf. Oh, great. How are all of you people so fucking retarded? So then they try and watch the dog turn into a werewolf and immediately fall asleep watching him stare at a log for like 10 hours. You guys are so fucking stupid. So Shawshank and the incest brides try to kill Boog for being a tranny. Sounds reasonable to me. And they hide behind the incest truck and the bullet ricochets and blows up the truck. So then they run into a mine shaft that apparently has really hot lava inside. You know, that's not how that works, right? That's not how any of this works. So then they try to kill each other on a lava roller coaster and apparently a loop makes them all switch positions despite the fact that the loop never branches off into other tracks or other loops. Physics! Physics! And then the stuffed bear falls into the lava and dies. Oh no! What a fucking tragedy. So despite going deeper into the mountain, when they finally fly out of the mountain, they're on the top of the mountain. And Boog decides to use a cactus as a giant dildo. Hey man, I'll give you points for being a freaky bitch. So dipshit dog Von Forthreich literally believes he's a fucking werewolf. But not just any werewolf, a gay werewolf. This is a surprisingly faggoty movie. So everyone hides in a panic room guarded by sticks, which Shawshank and the incestors drive on top of and shit. And then they reveal their whole plan in front of literally everybody. At this point, everyone still genuinely believes that there's a fucking werewolf in this film. Can we just... Not. So everyone goes in for a final showdown to find the dog that managed to delude himself into thinking he's actually a fucking werewolf. Then everyone stares at Boog's asshole for some reason, then Boog fucks up everyone's shit, including Shawshank and the incestors that dressed up as werewolves for... Why? What was their plan with that? So then Boog fucks up Shawshank's gun and then he grows saber tooth claws for some reason. So they fuck up Shawshank and people have finally fucking figured out that there's no fucking werewolf, you know, after an hour and 20 minutes of watching these bumbling retards trying to convince one another that this exists. Then the movie ends with the Native American guy saying, Open season is closed permanently. <laughs> Please. Please, for the love of God, let that be the case. Then he offers Boog the chance to come home, despite the whole first movie being spent trying to convince everyone that he should not go there and that he should be in the wild. Then the stuffed bear comes back from the dead. Fucking awesome. Then everyone goes camping and everyone realizes that they can't go camping because they're already in the fucking forest already. Why are you all so fucking incompetent? Then it turns out that the werewolf really is real. Why can't this bullshit just fucking end? I just want to die after watching this piece of shit movie. Then Elliot starts dancing and kills the werewolf with more cringe. <laughs> so then the werewolf becomes friends with everyone and the movie still hasn't fucking ended yet. When will this bullshit just stop? Then the dog's Down Syndrome mom comes back from somewhere. Why do these movies think that the audience like these characters? Then there's more dogs, but where the fuck is Roger? Then the werewolf tries to convince Boog to go back to being a trap. God, this movie is so fucking gay. Where the fuck was Roger? Roger!